life and see the many obstacles he brought me over because he brought me through this and then he brought me through that to bring me where I am today. Paul said, I am that I am by the grace of God. Now, I don't have a bragging bone in my body because every victory I have, amen, it was because God has fought the battle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you, I'm just having me a good time all by myself. Hallelujah. I don't know, it must be the atmosphere. It must be you praising God. It might be you singing. It might, it's got to be something. I'm so glad you helped me praise the Lord. Sometimes you need help, amen, praising God. Because sometimes some people are in the valley, but then they come in an atmosphere like this, and something begins to happen. Joy begins to spring up. Life begins to be renewed. Hope begins to resurrect. Oh, I feel like praising God. I wish I had a praise church. Amen. I got something to praise God for. Give him a hallelujah. Now let me get dignified and act like I'm a professor of the Bible. Give God all the glory. Hallelujah. I got something, and I hope you got something to praise God for. This is not a show. This is an attitude of gratitude. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. 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 My soul. My soul, my personal testimony is they gave up on me medically and said I would never be able to be normal at 23 years old. Told my wife to look for other means of income because it's a done deal. But God, and you talking about it, man, you don't want to sing. You talking about you don't want to lift your hands. When I think about what God has brought me through, I'm now 67 years old. And I am that age because of the grace of God. I'm normal because of the grace of God. I'm functioning because of the grace of God. He brought me through this. And he brought me through that. And that's why I'm so grateful to you. Now give God a good praise if you got a testimony. Lord, I'm grateful. I can go home now. <laughs> I can go home right there. Because whether you believe it or not, God is pleased with the atmosphere already. Huh? He created us for his good pleasure. He created us to praise him. And I think we've done a wonderful job praising him. And I'm not tired yet. But I'm going to slow down a little bit. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God. Come on, just tell three people he's an awesome God. Encourage the world to serve him. Encourage the sinner to live their life to him. Because he's an awesome God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How many have tasted and have found him to be good? Deep down in your sanctified soul. I'm grateful. Woo. I'm trying to slow down to get to the message on today. Praise team, you done set my soul on fire. I appreciate all the help in the midst of the work. Amen. People working behind the scenes. Thanking those keeping the church clean and keeping the yards done. Amen. You got you know time to just thank folk for being so faithful. And so loving towards the works of God. For they're a great reward for faithfulness. Mm. Don't take it light the things you do for God. Don't let the devil fill your heart with foolish thoughts. But give it everything you got. And guess what great payday. The sickness that was supposed to take you out. 
God will revive you. That accident that was supposed to kill you, he'll put an angel in the way. I wish I could talk to somebody. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. He'll preserve you to look good even in your latter years. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. You won't look like somebody's grandparent. Uh, come on, when you stand next to your grandchild, you look like your brothers and sisters. I wish I, wish I could talk to somebody. Won't he keep you? He'll tell, I'll take the garments of heaviness off you and put on the garment of praise. He'll put a new look on you. You won't have to have all that. Uh, let me get off of that and go back to the text. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Isn't God good? He'll beautify you with his meekness. You ain't got to walk around looking like Bozo the Clown. Amen. A little makeup is fine. But some folk got eyelashes that'll meet you at the front door. And they at the back door. I wish I could talk to somebody. You ain't got to overdo it. God loves beauty. Don't be coming in here looking like Ann Hag's child. Fix your hair up and put some mouthwash in your mouth. I wish I could talk to somebody. Isn't God good? I'm glad he saved me. Aren't you glad he saved you? On our way to a devil's hell and was thinking we was enjoying the trip until we got a taste of the other side. Oh, isn't God good? Give him one more praise and let me take you into a tour of the word of God. As you're looking at the slide on the screen, you'll see our topic text for today. A praise of misunderstanding. A praise of misunderstanding. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine and was sharing with them the topic that I was using. They said, Pastor, we don't even know how you come up with some of that stuff you be talking about with a topic. I said, it's God's doing, God's doing alone. Huh? What do you mean by a praise of misunderstanding? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's why you're watching and that's why you're here. To find out what does it mean to have a praise of misunderstanding. Well, let's take a trip through the tours of the word of God and we'll find that 400 years of no word from God. Can you imagine living 400 years without a promise, without encouragement, without the spirit of God revealing anything to you while you're yet going through hell and high water? 400 years, that's, that's generations of time that has elapsed with no word from God. Huh? No encouragement from God. Many of you can kind of visualize this in your own life. That if God hadn't brought a word, had nobody come by and inspired you, nobody came and said, it's going to be all right. What do you mean, preacher? 400 years and no word from God, no one had a word. They were fighting, amen, a period of darkness between the Old Testament and the New Testament. 400 years. 400 years of nobody being able to tell you the Lord said, huh? God will. 400 years. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, it says this in 8 and 4, where the word of the king is, there's what? Power. So that's telling us what? For 400 years, these people did not have any power. My God, fighting demons but no power. Fighting the elements of discouragement, but no power. For 400 years, no word from God, no energizing word to inspire you. And so without having the word of God, the devil, amen, was amen, at liberty to do whatever he wanted to do. Because see, as long as you have the word of God, Satan is at bay. Is anybody listening to the word this morning? As long as you use the word, the enemy can't do what he wants to do in your life. Why? Because he has to respect the word of God. Because the word has power. The Bible says resist the devil. And he has to do what? He has to flee. Why? Because he can't stand under the pressure of the power of the word of God. But for 400 years, these people, because of no word, no light, 
no power or vision. They wandered around in darkness. Matthew says it in 4.16. He said, the people which sat in darkness, they were where? In darkness. Not only were they in darkness, they were in the region of death, the shadow of death. You might want me to read the scripture, so I'll read the scripture. The Bible says, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprang up. But light sprung up out of darkness and the people began to revive. Isn't it amazing? What do you mean, preacher? I want you to get into the theater of my mind. Can you imagine yourself being in the Sahara Desert for a number of days with no water? Temperatures above 100 degrees. And for days you had no access to water. You're at the point of death. But somebody comes by and gives you a little sip of water. Your response is going to be erratic. Your response, your response is going to be wow. You, you, you. You, you, everything in you now comes alive because you want more water because it had been lacking for so long. Death was knocking on your door. Your back was meeting your stomach. And now all of a sudden somebody brings you a sip of water. I wish I could get you to really see what I'm trying to bring out to you this morning about the desperation that these people after 400 years of darkness, now all of a sudden, Jesus shows up. In John 8 and 12, the Bible says, then spake Jesus again unto them. He says what? I am the light of the world. They were in darkness, but now light has come into their presence. Some of us was in complete darkness, doing what we wanted to do when we wanted to do and how we wanted to do. We thought we were living, but we were in a devil's hell. Some of us used drugs to stay, amen, afloat. Some of us used sex and alcohol, amen, just to have some measure of excitement and joy. And that was in complete darkness. But one day, Jesus, oh, I wish somebody said I had a one day. Aha, uh -huh, one day Jesus came by. And light sprung up out of darkness. And he said, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. Hit your neighbor in the ribs and say, live, child, live. And refuse to die. Come on, tell them, refuse to die. Hey, man, these people were at the point of, of, of death. And now here comes this man with miracles in his hand. His name is called Jesus. Huh? I don't care what the skeptics got to say. You're never at the argument of anybody's uh, uh, argument when you have your own testimony. Huh? And in their minds, as Jesus begins to bring light and fulfill their thirst, they began to have in their mind, the king has come. In Matthew 4 and 24, the Bible says, and his fame went throughout all Syria. And what happened? They brought unto him the sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils. I want to pause just here for a second. If this gospel is benefiting you, where are the people you bringing in? If this message is so great to your soul, where are the people you bringing in? Uh, we got some gospel tracks out there, and you ought to make an assignment that every week I'm going to take five gospel tracks and give out at least five every week. Get, come on, we got over a thousand tracks in this building. You ought to grab five of them or more, and every time you go to a restaurant, every time you stop to a gas station, every time you go to a store, hand them a track, because that track one day may bring them out of darkness. What do you mean, preacher? Let me finish reading the scripture. 
the Bible says. And those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic uh -huh, and those that had palsy, what happened? He healed them. And he healed them. Anybody got an emotional healing from God? See, sometimes it ain't always about your flesh being healed. Your spirit needed to be healed. Your mind needed to be healed. Your vision needed to be healed. Your soul needed to oh, I wish I could. I wish I could talk to somebody this morning. The Bible says, amen, they were in darkness, but now all of a sudden, this sprung up light called Jesus came up out of the midst of darkness, and they were able to see him from afar off. Whenever you're in complete darkness and you light a candle, guess what? You can see it from a distance. My God, I hear people say, amen, at the point of death, they see light. And people say, don't go to the light, but go to the light. The light going to save you. Light going to heal you. Jesus was the answer. Listen now. Jesus was the answer, and his name began to spread like wildfire. Hallelujah. People have gotten healed in this place of cancer. Some people have had tumors to dissolve in this place. And yet we're wondering, God, what you going to do next? He said, listen, the miracle is in your mouth. Keep preaching that word. Somebody's getting healed right now. Somebody's vision is being wiped off so that they could see what God has promised to come to pass. I wish I could talk to somebody. So the people were so engulfed. I, mean, I want you to keep in your mind the story of the desert. Because these people were so elated. They were so moved. They were so excited. They were so thirsty. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how thirsty are you for the presence of God? Come on, give them a great hand clap right there. The people, amen, because of their previous desperation we can't imagine the praise that began to go up we did some praising in here this morning but I got a news flash for you our praise could not compare to the praise that them people were giving to the Lord why because their needs were desperate they were in dire straits. Here you are with your car. Here you are with your bad suit, your nice tie and your necklace. You, you look mighty fine. Amen. So you praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But when you are in desperation, when you come out of hell and God answers your prayer, you ain't got time to be cute, baby. You are giving God glory. You shout, you dance, you pick them up and you put them down because you know how God blessed you. There was no restraint to the people trying to get to Jesus. No restraint. The people would tear off roofs. Matt Luke talks about how they came and they tore off the roof and lowered down a man that was stuck and sick of a palsy, crippled. What are you doing to reach somebody that's lost? Huh? Somebody who need a word from God. Next time somebody tell you they say, say, come on, let's pray. And if you're available, let's get to the church. There's a healing in the house. I, I, this is not even a part of my message, but God is saying, there's a healing in the house. That's why the devil don't want you to get to the house. He knows if you get in the atmosphere, your spirit be lifted. Your joy will return. Your peace of mind will be satisfied. Huh? But they tore off the roof. There was no restraint. Tell your neighbor, faith has no restraints. People even violated the laws of Moses. What do you mean, preacher? Amen. There was a woman that reached out in the crowd and touched the hem, amen, of the rabbi. That was totally against the law, amen, of Moses. You were not allowed to touch, especially if you had an infirmity. You were not allowed, but see, when the power of God and the desperation of faith, when they meet together, the natural law has no power of restraint in your life. I can do what I can do 
because I got faith in God. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. find amen that they could see that miracles were available and they would not allow anything to separate them I don't know if I got this particular scripture on your screen today but in Mark chapter 6 verse 35 the Bible says and when the day was far spent how how did they say far spent his disciples came unto him and said this is a desert place Look, 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 at it, look, 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 I'm not tongue-tied, I'm doing it on purpose. You got to understand something, huh? You got to understand something. When you are really hungry for the presence of God, there's no restraint to what you would do, huh? The people refuse to even go home. They refuse to worry about how hungry they would be. They came to Jesus and said, Jesus, these people, it's a great multitude, and we don't have enough provisions for them. Send them home. Isn't it amazing that we have no compassion? Huh? Jesus said, wait a minute. They have been following me. They have been trusting me. So because they've been trusting me, I'm going to provide everything they need. I, I wish I could talk. Tell your neighbor, as long as you keep trusting God, he'll make a way out of no way. If that's your testimony, give him praise right there. So, 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 pastor, what are you trying to say about this here praise of misunderstanding? Well, in their praise was our God is here to deliver us. They had got so captivated by the light. They got so captivated by the miracles. They got so captivated by the praise. They began to interpret what they saw to be the answer to their prayers. And because of their interpretation, they began to say Jesus as their king. But the problem was, he was the king of their hope but not the king of their understanding. Let me say that to you again. He was the king of their hope, but he wasn't the king of their understanding. The king they understood was an earthly king. See, you can't walk with God with an earthly mind because you'll put expectations on God that he has not sanctioned to be yours. And you'll give him praise based off of a whole lot of hype with no understanding. That's why, amen, sometimes, amen, ministries do a whole lot to get you emotionally high. But when the dust settle, you're going to need a word from God. I wish I had some help in here. And so we see that these people were so captivated by the, the miracles and, and the praise and, and they began to say, oh, our king has now arrived. We see it in the demonstration, in their praise as Jesus is entering in to Jerusalem. The Bible says in John 12, 12, it says on the next day, much people, what? How much? How much? Now the number is insurmountable. Because this was a feast that they were seeing. And so the people would come to the feast and they heard that Jesus, <laughs> the light of the world, the miracle worker, the life changer, was now coming to Jerusalem. <laughs> they took branches of palm trees and they went forth to do what? Meet him. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, a praise of misunderstanding and they cried Hosanna now see what you got to understand you got to understand that that word Hosanna in the Hebrew means save now see 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 if God don't do what you want now he may not be your God on tomorrow and we have a whole lot of people that praise God like that 
I'm going to praise God because I heard the testimonies. I went to a service and my hands looked new. I, I went to a service and see my feet did too. And when you got home, all of that seeing disappeared. They still was looking like they looked before. And so now that the hype is over and you done prayed to God and things remain the same, your praise began to diminish because you had a praise of misunderstanding. They said, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh, what? In the name of the Lord. They borrowed that from Psalm 118, verse 25, because it says what? Save now. God, I'm going to praise you because I need you to save me now. God, I'm praising you because my rent is due now. Save me, Lord, because I'm, I'm sick in my body and I need a miracle now. But if God don't show up on time, we sing the song. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Then it skips over and says, may not come when you want him. But they'll be there right on time. But we don't wait for the time. We want it now. Am I talking to anybody? So by applying, listen now, by applying the palms to Jesus and identifying him as their king, they were hailing him as the Messiah who would do what? Deliver them from the Roman domination. And this is what caused a praise of misunderstanding. Because their praise were full of now. Huh? And their view only applied to earthly needs. See, when you're looking at God just for your natural needs, you're going to become disappointed. I, I wish I could say that with clarity. See, carnal views don't make God apply to you. You have to learn how to get into the word so that you can understand so that when you praise him, you praise him with understanding. Lord, I don't know how you're going to bless me, but I'm going to give you this praise anyhow. When they came, now listen to me now, when they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus began to ride in on that donkey. Have you ever went to or seen the Super Bowl? The stadium is packed. The crowds are filled, not a seat empty. And when their team scores a touchdown, the, the, the noise scale goes crazy. Well, it still couldn't compare to what they were experiencing as they began to lay their palms before the feet of Jesus as he came. And not only that, they began to extol the Lord in such high degree that when they threw their palms and had nothing left, they began to throw their clothes. That's how much he was worth their praise. Look at three people and ask them, what's the worth of your praise to him. They were so dominated by their experience, but their praise of misunderstanding left them to disappointment. Anybody follow me? The praise of misunderstanding will lead you to disappointment. Look at what the Bible says in Luke chapter 23, verse 18. The Bible says, but they all together raised a deep cry from the depths of their throats, saying, away with this man. Wait a minute. The man from Galilee, the man that came on a donkey, the man that healed the sick, opened up the blind eyes, caused the lame to walk, caused men to restore their mind. This same man, they now say, do away with him. Release unto us Barabbas. 
He was a man who had been thrown into prison for raising a riot in the city and for murder. Isn't it amazing how Satan wants to give us always a counterfeit? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, be careful of what you understand. Because Satan will always give you a counterfeit before you ever experience the real. One thing I found that really hurts ministries is that people get attached to crazy ministries, get wounded and scarred. They were good people. But now because of the scar and the misunderstanding of their praise, they become defective wherever they go from that point on. And it takes the power of the Holy Ghost to remove the spirit of the counterfeit so that they can begin to embrace the real. I wish I could talk to somebody. How can you always tell real? Now, this is just my opinion. But if you don't hear nothing about touching sin, then it's an emotional church. God came to save us from our sin. I'm here to tell you that, amen, it's not, amen, this thing called what, amen, social agreement. What's that word? What's that word? Help me, somebody. Uh, uh, politically correct. The gospel is not designed that way. If it don't touch you and correct you, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. I wish I could talk to somebody. And so here we see that the counterfeit was standing right next to the real. Why did the people select Barabbas? Mm -hmm. Who do you want? Pilate stood up and said, who do you want me to release? And they said, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Christ. What most people don't know is that Barabbas' first name was Jesus. See, the association was so close. Barabbas' name was Jesus. But it's Old Testament writings and scripts and manuscripts that you'll find that out. And so when they picked Jesus Barabbas, they picked him because he was earthly being used. We gravitate to people that give us what we want. Come on, you can look deep all you want to. Huh? You, you, you can look deep all you want to. If somebody come and start paying your bills, you don't care about them laying up with three other sisters as long as he take care of you. you. I wish I could talk to somebody. But see, that's a counterfeit. Oh, well, you know they got a word, but they laying up with all the sisters in the church. But you're concerned about a word. Pastor, you done got, got away from preaching to meddling. Huh? And so we see here, they had both real and fake standing side by side. But because of the similarity and the misunderstanding of their praise, they picked the one they could see doing something. I wish I could talk to somebody, Mother Gloria. I wish I could talk to somebody. Look at this. Look at this. And so the people chose Barabbas because he looked like he was going to deliver Israel now. I want to tell five people in this place, God is already moving on your situation. I just want to caution you. I just want to caution you. You just got to learn to wait. Your impatience will destroy what you have desired God to do. The Bible says, impatience possess your soul, not coming up wanting no good thing. So who's the enemy of your success? It is your impatience, whoever that's for. And so here we see the high contrast between the two. And they pick, based off of their praise of misunderstanding, they pick Barabbas. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. Who do you pick? So there was many who demonstrated the same behaviors. We have that same behavior today. 
that if God don't do what you want him to do and things don't go your way, your praise began to diminish. What are you talking about, preacher? The Bible says in Acts 17 and 23, For I, as I passed by, I beheld your devotion. I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. What do you mean, preacher? As long as God is meeting your needs, you haven't taken the time out to search the scriptures, but because your flesh is satisfied, you can dance, 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 and you can dance all night. But when things are not going like you have desired them, there's something lacking in your praise. Huh? Huh? But Job picked it up and said, amen, I serve a God that, amen, I can be up and I can be down, but God remains faithful. Yeah. Wish I could talk to somebody. He's all I'll ever need as long as he's doing what I say. But if the Lord is not answering the way we want him, it begins to diminish. Let's look at Daniel. Daniel says this. That the praise of misunderstanding. But Daniel said, when you praise God and you understand, listen to what happens. In Daniel 11 and 32, the Bible says, but the people that do know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall do what? And they shall what? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when you have a praise of understanding, you know God going to work that thing out. There's no wishy-washy to my praise. He may not come when I want him, but I'm going to keep my praise going because praise is like radar. What do you mean, preacher? Have you ever been riding down the road? You didn't see no cop at all. But guess what? He connected his beam to your engine, and he was able to record how fast you were going. Well, when praise is going up, God has a way of being able to tune in because he said he loves to inhabit. He loves to inhabit the praise. See, the devil wants you to stop praising so God can't find you. But what? Hit somebody and say, keep your praise alive now. If you want to see the handiwork of God in your life. Now give them a good hand clap, praise. Paul said, I beheld your devotion. And you look like you love God. Boy, nobody can out shout you. Show can out dance you. But when trouble come your way, when disappointment hits your life, when sickness look like it's raining in your body, what happens to your praise? Job said, you sound like a silly woman. Shall we only receive good of the hand of the Lord and not evil? He said, my praise don't still stay consistent. Look at somebody and say, I've learned how to praise him through. Because he brought me through this. And he brought me through that. And I'm so grateful. Come on, say, I'm so grateful to the Lord. Give God a good hand clap. He brought me through this. He brought me through that. I'm so grateful to you. He made a way out of no way. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to you. If that's your testimony, give God a good hand clap. Your praise must be a praise 
of understanding. I praise him because I understand his attributes. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He said he'll be my God that will heal me. He's Jehovah Nissa, the Lord that'll fight battles for me, seen and unseen. He's working behind the scenes like Hollywood does with its actors. He'll put stunt angels in your way when the devil tries to snuff you out. And the enemy will think he got you, but he messing with the wrong one. I wish I had somebody that can understand that he is worth a praise of understanding. When you praise him because you understand him, you'll understand that hard times will sometime come. But my God's going to allow me to outlast any problem I've ever had. I wish I could talk to somebody right now. You might be dealing with an issue in your life. But I'm here to say keep your praise going because you understand God will make a way. Am I talking right to somebody? Give God a good praise. I want to change the music lineup. I want you to play that song again. But turn it down low as I get ready to do this altar call. I'm so grateful. Turn it down low. I just want to hear it. I, he's, I'm grateful. Woo. Say I'm grateful. I pray that this message today has helped somebody. My desire is as I preach this gospel, I'm giving you everything that I have in me to compel you and God draw you by what was preached in your life. He will make a way. He will help you. And he will restore everything that the canker worm and the caterpillar has eaten. But you need to give your life to Christ. So today, if you are hearing this word, I want to make this appeal to you. Say, Lord Jesus, I heard this word. And I've seen many athletes kiss up to heaven and say, it's because of the Lord. But they really don't know you. But today, I come to surrender my, my will, my heart, and my mind to you. The Bible says, if thou wilt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. There's anybody here in this building or on Facebook or YouTube, stretch out your hand in my direction and say, Lord, today I want to give my life to Christ. I've heard the word and it has compelled me and convicted me. And I want to say yes to your will and yes to your way. If that's what you meant and that's what you said, you're saved right where you are. Come on, give God a good praise. As we go out, you can turn it up. Choir, come on back up here. I'm grateful to you. You brought me through this. You brought me through that. I'm so grateful. 